hard to say exactly what goes into making a Marine, or a man for that matter. But whatever it is, there are two basic elements you always have to have. Right, when I call out your last name, you're going to answer up, sir, here, and sound off your first name. Alan. One is good material. Brooker. And the other is the right environment. Brooke. Yes, sir, Gary. If the Marine Corps has come to be known for the caliber of men, it turns out, it's largely because of the value the Corps places on both of these requirements. It may not look like it, but the Corps is very careful in selecting its recruits. And when it comes to training them, well, you can judge for yourself. For all Marine recruits, processing begins right here. You're now at Marine Corps Recruit Depot, San Diego, California. You're about to start your first day of processing. There are five days involved in processing. These five days do not count as part of your training. From now on, the first word out of your mouth is going to be, sir. Unless you are asked a simple question that can be answered with a yes or a no, and then you will answer yes, sir, or no, sir. While you are here, we will expect you to act as a man. You will be treated as a man. From now on, you will do things to the best of your ability, and you will move as fast as possible. Almost as much a trademark of the Marines as the way they carry themselves and walk is their distinctive hairstyle. It takes some time for recruits to develop the other characteristics, but they can get the haircut in just a few minutes, which is just one of the many practical advantages of this kind of haircut. The haircutting begins the processing, and in a way, it's rather fitting because it graphically marks the kind of radical transformation the recruits can expect in other areas. As the processing continues, the recruits get the initial issue of clothing they'll wear during training. Ten and a half. The first scrub down in the core is the first of countless showers and wash-ups of all kinds they'll undergo in the Marines. The Corps has always been zealous about cleanliness. And upholding the military tradition of neatness and bearing. No matter what you're wearing. Do your Turn around. Go down and exchange your trousers 34, 36. The Corps is also very demanding about physical condition, and so examinations are an important part of the initial processing. All of these men were carefully examined before they were accepted as Marine recruits, but the Corps just wants to be sure there's nothing wrong with them now. Those that need glasses will get them. Number seven is missing. Number 14, snake eyes. If any Number bad teeth are found, they'll be taken care of while the recruit undergoes training. Was that, was that 30 occlusal? Yes, number 30 occlusal. Okay, Father. I'll be here in the classroom all the rest of the morning to give you assistance on any uh, question that you may have. Yes, sir. The Corps also wants to know just what its recruits are capable of. And so they're given a series of tests. Those with some special skills will get more tests. The PT, or physical training tests, are designed to be equally revealing about the physical condition of the recruits. extra training and attention to ensure they meet the requirements set for all recruits. The last day of processing, the recruits receive their rifles and other tools of their trade, which they'll learn to use during training. 59, 27. 
Processing ends with the arrival of the drill instructors, or DIs, who will lead them through training. For the recruits, this is probably the most important event of the processing. It brings them together with the men who are going to be personally responsible for their training. During the training, the recruits in each platoon will spend some 16 hours each day under the sharp, watchful eyes of their drill instructor. Over the years, these drill instructors have become almost as much of a legend in the Corps as its heroes, and rightly so, because they've had a hand in shaping most of them. But like all legends, they've been transformed and exaggerated into something that they aren't. And as a result, they're frequently judged on the basis of what people have heard they are, rather than what the recruits actually know they are. Whenever you're told to do something, do it good, as quickly as possible, to the best of your ability. All three of us, the three commander and the two drill instructors, will be in charge of you at all times. In any case, it's hard to exaggerate the importance of the D.I.s, and the Corps is very much aware of the role they play in making Marines. For this reason, it carefully selects them. Great officer in your chain of command. Yes, sir, it was. Let's see, have you passed the PFT in the last six months? Yes, sir. Do you feel that you have anything medically wrong with you that would disqualify you for this type of duty? No, sir. Steps on Green, you realize that this is a very challenging job and a very demanding job. It'll probably mean that you'll have to spend approximately eight hours a week at work and probably have to be away from home every third night standing the duty. Do you want to be a drill instructor? Yes, sir, I would like to be a DI. Then Justice carefully trains them at its drill instructor school. Period of instruction, we're going to be covering the daily seven exercise. You as drill instructors must know the daily seven exercise in order to teach your recruits. The daily seven exercise is nothing more than a warm-up exercise. Thank you, Welcome to the board, sir. Thank you, sir. Please take a seat. Just out of drill instructors. When they do become drill instructors, they work under the supervision of a series commander who is responsible for all the platoons in a particular series. Thus, whatever he may be, every D.I. is carefully selected, carefully trained, experienced, and under constant supervision. While you're in luck, Sergeant Cruz, we're just uh, picking the series up out of receiving, and uh, you'll be able to get with them all the way through, and I think it'll be a very rewarding experience. Uh, it's much better starting with them. So, uh, I'll be seeing you on the drill. And if he seems brusque and impatient, it's because he has a tough job and not much time to do it. Recruit training actually begins with the DI taking over and telling their platoons exactly what will be expected of them. The first place they run up against these demands is on the drill field. They get more of the same in physical training, where they begin with the basic exercises. And it continues in their classes. This part here located in gray in color is known as the trigger housing. The trigger housing. I'm going to move down here and pick up this part right here, which is under spray. Some 10,000 troops under the command of Brigadier General Ross. The range over here on the other side with only 500 men. Careful not to touch the inside portion. And we're going to place the dressing directly on the wound. We're going to spread our fingers out. Our 
There are also practical applications, such as guard duty. Oh, oh. Sir, Frag Iago reports post number four, all secure. Post and orders remain the same, nothing unusual to report, sir. Sir, 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 post number five. Training in close combat. Also, hand-to-hand -hand combat. And more drilling. Everybody's constantly tired and aching these first days of training. Still, the exercises get progressively harder. But they keep at it, and for most of them, it pays off. For some, however, it's too much. As soon as the DIs spot individuals who are having trouble, they usually work out a program of their own to give them special help. However, when a private's inability to progress hinders progress of the platoon and other recruits, he is assigned to the special training branch. Now that's just a small part of the contract that each and every one of you people signed when you come into Marine Corps. Now that's part of the reason why you're here in motivation. Here the recruits work and live with others who have the same problems and special programs are set up to help them meet the training requirements. Some may require additional motivation. You will get paid once. Others need help in physical conditioning. Two, sir. One, sir. Two, sir. One, sir. Two, sir. One, sir. Two, sir. Hands over. Some have medical problems which keep them from participating in the activities of a normal training platoon. For those who find it difficult to obey the rules, there's correctional custody. By the time the final days of the first phase of training roll around, Everyone is beginning to feel that they're a part of a team. By now, the soreness and stiffness have begun to disappear. So have confusion and uncertainty. Sir, Private Pippa reporting back from sick man's orders, sir. I right, get your gear off and deal with the rest of the series. All right, sir. Most recruits manage to find the strength and energy for sports and for competition with the other recruits in training. is a vital part of recruit training. With every man required to swim at least 75 meters, fully clothed and carrying a rifle. By the time they've completed the first phase of training, the recruits are considered ready to be introduced to another old tradition of military life, mess and maintenance duty.
The recruits have a week of mess and maintenance during their training. They spend the next two weeks at the rifle range. First, learning how to use their rifles. Up and into your shoulder, rotating up, keeping the right elbow up high, straight up. Bring the elbow well underneath the piece, aiming in, getting a good natural point of aim, squeezing the trigger straight to the rear. Then, practicing to develop skill. This is one of many opportunities the recruits will have to qualify with their rifle. All Marines are required to fire for score once a year. Also included in second phase is an introduction to combat training. Here, the recruits are trained in basic skills they'll need in the field. Go up to 360 degrees. They learn how to use a compass. It's composed of that makes up the earth. Now then, what we're going to learn today is how to shoot an azimuth. Before we can do this, we must practice using maps. Such as the point, if you look to your rear, where the radar, little radar, is set up on the hill. Here, they have a chance to actually work with mines and demolition charges. The recruits also learn to use grenades properly. Prepare to throw. Throw grenade. On the way! Filtration training. Combat training introduces the recruits to the kind of food and living conditions they'll encounter in the field. Practically all training is in the form of exercise, with the recruits actually doing what they're learning. training activities take place at night. Tracer displays show the various kinds of coverage produced by different fire patterns. The men return to the recruit depot for the third and final phase of their training. This is a spit and polish period, and everyone is very much aware that there are only a few weeks of training left. With the recruits expectantly looking forward to the end of their arduous and demanding schedule. 
and the drill instructor struggling to smooth out the rough edges in time for graduation. In the meantime, everyone continues to drill. The physical training is harder than ever. Still, everybody does it. Their schedule is tougher than ever, but now they can handle it without straining. Yes, you, don't, you don't see anything to it. You don't do anything about it. For those who display a potential as leaders, there is a special program to develop it and make them aware of the challenges and rewards as well as the responsibilities of leadership. Almost before anybody can believe it, graduation day arrives. As far as the recruits are concerned, there are really no special preparations. Their barracks are always spotless. The ranks and uniforms display the same daily meticulous care. What family and friends of the recruits see here today is no special show, but actually the same conditions they could see any day. The big difference, of course, is in the recruits themselves. For parents and relatives, it's well worth the long trip many of them have made to be here. It's a proud and happy day for families and friends. The recruits' pride and feeling of accomplishment seems to be contagious. Even the seasoned old mentors who have gone through this many times before feel it. And some of those tough, stone-faced characters will even sheepishly admit that they feel a great sense of loss every time graduation day comes around. It's an especially proud day for the recruits who receive awards. And there are many, ranging from the most outstanding recruit to those who have excelled in the different areas of training. But whether or not they received a special award, all the recruits have a feeling of achievement. They've earned the right to be called Marines. It takes good men to get through the Marine recruit training program, and everybody knows it. But there are two facts you can't get away from. It's that the Corps obviously started with some pretty good men. And it's equally obvious that it did a pretty good job of training them. The whole thing is nicely summed up in the words of one mother who wrote, we sent you a boy and you sent back a man. She could also have said, you sent back a Marine.